Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew Davison, and I'm here with our local uh, biblical historian, Pastor Glenn Fluelling. As many of you know, we just finished up a series on building relationships and trust and communication. So I thought, what better way to start us off than having a conversation with Glenn about our next book series, which is Ephesians. So thank you, Glenn, for being here. So tell me, what do you know about Ephesians or Ephesus, the city of Ephesus? <clears throat> well, it's an interesting city. The name means desirable. And it was one of the largest and most important and beautiful cities of Greek Roman era in what was called Asia, which is now Turkey. <clears throat> it was the most important trading center on the Mediterranean. And it was at the mouth of the Kestras River, right into the Aegean Sea. So it wasn't too far from Rome. Okay. So when do we first hear about Ephesus in the Bible? Yeah, well, we hear about Ephesus in Acts 18, 18 and 19. The Apostle Paul visited there on his second missionary journey in AD 52. And it's interesting, at that time he brought Priscilla and Aquila with him. And after three months, he left Ephesus, but he left Priscilla and Aquila there. And he went on to Jerusalem for, he wanted to be there in time for one of the feasts. Uh, were there any other people that had influence in Ephesus? <laughs> yeah. We're told that soon after Paul left, uh, Apollos came. <clears throat> we're told that in Acts 18, 24 to 26. <clears throat> and Apollos is described as an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures. And as he was preaching, Priscilla and Aquila realized, oh, this guy only knows about the baptism of John the Baptist. So they took him aside and told him about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So now Paul did a lot of traveling around. You mentioned this was his second missionary journey. Did he ever come back? Yeah, in AD 54-57 he made his third missionary trip. And at that time he stayed three two and a half to three years, the longest time he'd been in any church. So you add up three years and three months, he spent a lot of time there in Ephesus. Was there anything, was there any uh, specific troubles uh, when Paul came there? I mean, it seems like wherever he traveled, there was trouble behind him. Uh, what happened in Ephesus? Well, <clears throat> one of the seven wonders of the ancient world was just outside Ephesus. And that was the Temple of Diana. And in it was the statue that the Ephesians said fell out of the sky from Jupiter directly. And at Paul's time, this was probably one of the most important worship centers in the whole empire. And people visited from all over the world. And they would take back with them statues of Diana or models of the temple made out of gold or silver or wood. And Paul got into trouble with the idol makers because so many people came to Christ, they were losing their business. So there was a big riot. And of course, Christianity doesn't like idols, so they were getting out of business. Um, so was this Paul's last time in Ephesus? Yes and no. <laughs> in AD 57, on his way back to Jerusalem again, Paul stopped at the island of Miletus, which was 80 kilometers or 50 miles from Ephesus. And he asked the elders to come for a farewell time. And during that time, he tells them he knows he's going to Jerusalem and he'll be persecuted and imprisoned. And they know it too. And they're trying to convince him not to go. And there's a great weeping and wailing. And from the way that it's written, and it's from some other places in Acts, we believe that this is a very large church because it seems like a large number of elders went. So, yeah, that was Paul's last connection with the church. Is there anyone else that we know, like Bible figures that we know of, that came to Ephesus as well? Yeah, when Paul writes to Timothy, 
he talks to Timothy about the time that he spent, Timothy spent in Ephesus. Mm -hmm. And then it's pretty strong, it's tradition, but it's pretty strong historical fact probably that John, Jesus' disciple, was the bishop there in the church for quite a while. And that he actually took uh, Mary, Jesus' mother, with him there. And there is a house in the city now, in the ruins of the city, which is called Mary's House. A lot of people go visit it. That would be quite the host to see, I would think. Um, so is there anything else about the book itself that would be helpful um, right now? Yeah, I think it's good to understand that the book of Ephesians has been called Paul's best writing. It's said by numbers of um, commentators that is the summation of the best of his theology. And that reflects back on the church in Ephesus because it seems like he, was, he could write to them pretty heavy theology thinking that they would understand it. And it's a different letter than any of his other letters because there's no mention of any incidents that happened in the church. There are no troubles mentioned. There are no special allusions made to anything. There's no reference to names of members in the church. There's no salutation addressed to any individual members. And it doesn't have any personal details from Paul or details about local things. It's just a treatise on theology and the application of theology. So it, it kind of stands out from all the other letters which had all those other some of those other things in them all the time. So now this will be the first of a couple of our talks because I'm sure there's a few more things we should probably know about Ephesians and perhaps Paul's journey. Um, is there anything else you'd like to kind of end us on? I'm just looking forward to getting into a good theological understanding of who God is and what our place is in relation to him as a church. And I think that comes out strongly in Ephesians. Me too. Well, thank you very much, Pastor Glenn. See you probably next week this time. We'll see where the journey takes us. For the rest of us, keep watching. Enjoy the service.